strong the sweetness of it. Is the sweetness and my feeling of sweetness the extended phenotype of the idea of a fork? No, I, I mean, the sweetness comes from whatever you ate. The fork is how you got it to your mouth. And, and this, this shows the limit. This is exactly where it breaks in my view. It's, it's not that the parallels are not valid. Oh, it's beautiful. Evolu it, culture changes. And I agree with you. Uh, I have full respect for Native Americans, and it's all beautiful. There are all sorts of culture. They stack information. The information stacks across generation. It builds upon past generation. But this extended phenotype ID really only applies to the genes, to the DNA genes, because the ensemble of all consequences of this DNA gene will count in their success in evolution. In other words, uh, even if my genes have an impact on some girl uh, in some other country, uh, the, only the, the only thing that will matter from a perspective of natural selection is whether that impact helps my replication or doesn't help my replication. Now, we can say that of DNA genes. I'm not sure we can say that of human culture. Human culture only right. replicates to the extent that humans are transmitting the right bits of it. To that extent, the, the siege of natural selection for cultural ID are DNA genes, because we have genes that make us prefer certain IDs, and th these IDs will only uh, flow through, to, uh, they, they will only exist on planet Earth to the extent that they help my genes. And therefore, we're still into a DNA-centered okay. view of evolution. And human culture, to me, is the extended phenotype of those DNA genes that create brain structures that can communicate this information. So this is uh, a holdup that a lot of people have had. Um, because memes depend on us in order to exist, therefore they can't be their own independent things. That's like saying that because a virus depends on its host, a virus cannot evolve on its own. A, vi a virus is never its own independent evolving entity. Uh, the, the mindosphere, so all the minds of humans, that is the ecosystem, that is, that is the environment in which memes can evolve and spread and take over. So uh, I've, one example is, uh, so you can actually get, you can actually get memes that evolve that actually hurt their host. Uh, a good example of this is the sweetener that was used in ancient Rome for their wine. They started sweetening their wine with lead and this gave a lot of the wealthier people in their communities mild lead poisoning. Pretty mild, but it was, people think that it was having a mental effect on them and it was having an effect on their fertility. But it was super popular and so it kept spreading and it wasn't enough that it completely stopped them from reproducing. And a lot of, a lot of times it was people who were a little bit older that were starting to drink this. So they'd already had babies and so on. So a lot of times memes can be can evolve to be uh, bad for their host. And in some cases, they can actually be parasitic. They actually depend on hurting their host in order to spread. And one of the, one of the cleanest examples of this is the school shooting meme. The, the selection pressures that are, that are helping something spread are really interesting. And it's actually one of, the, one of the most important things that we've discovered in this field of cultural evolution is discovering what are the selection pressures that help memes you know these ideas spread, and with um, trying to find my slide here for that. The with the school shooter meme, every time there's a school shooting, this 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 behavior there's this there's this idea that's in this student's head that oh when things are bad I can just go kill everybody that I know or you know find some way to just rampage on everybody and then kill myself. That's kind of the normal sketch of this. Someone, they kill the members of their community and then they kill themselves. This is hurting both the host, so the, the actual kid who has this idea to go do this. It hurts him because he gets killed before he has offspring. And it hurts other fit individuals in his society, his, his fellow classmates. And in that process, it gets media attention and it spreads to the minds of millions of people and it lies there dormant. This meme just lies dormant 
until it happens to the right environmental triggers cue it to take action. And it does this whole thing again, and it blows up in the media again, and it spreads again. So there are some very interesting ways in which memes that actually hurt their host spread, and really they, they evolve, become really efficient at this over time. Uh, memes evolve again <laughs> as uh, mutations in the actual meme itself and different memes being put together with other memes that exist. Um, so certain really toxic religions can become really popular because of the collection of memes that are there. Some really toxic memes can actually spread by being with a bunch of positive memes and so on. This right. is often uh, brought. I'm not. I'm not really convinced by it. Uh, first, the school shooter meme. Uh, I, I think that there can be justifications for DNA-based evolution of self-sacrificial behavior and even suicidal behavior in certain instances. I won't go into the detail, but Dawkins and Weinstein have been discussing possibilities. I don't think we need a a mimetic explanation to explain to explain the school shooter meme. We may very well uh, replace the explanation with some tri some some balance of tribal desires to to fight a certain tribe and desperation uh, by individuals who see that they cannot be part of the reproductive line and you would have probably a, a more complete explanation of the phenomenon of school shooter which i will note is always someone who's desperate because of a loss of job or who's desperate because they they literally don't have a job already and they don't have a family. Uh, I don't hear much uh, fathers of 10 children being school shooters, and I think that the reason lies in our genes rather than in our means. Same thing for religion. Uh, people say that, that religion is toxic, but then they use a very human definition of toxicity. Toxicity being apparently being authoritarian to, toward your children or throwing gays off roofs. Uh, there is no... The, what, what we see in terms of religion today seems extremely reproductive. It seems like religion has been designed out of the three great religions, at least their, their fundamentalist and orthodox interpretation, are radically anti-gay. And in that sense, they help reproduction. And in fact, elements such as the existence of Jesus Christ and, and the whole idea of the birth being the, the center of the story of the New Testament, to me, is a reference that means they evolved toward reproductive behavior toward illustrating reproductive behavior and encouraging people into reproductive behaviors. That being said, I want to deny something you said earlier. Uh, I, I'm right, forgetting hold on, hold on. it. What did you... Can I just cut you off and say, you said that you think that memes evolve towards uh, productive behavior. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, so you that's understand what I that said memes now. are evolving. But what I wanted to... Oh, no, I mean, they, they evolve in the, sen in the sense that they change. I don't mind using the word evolve in, in, the ter in terms of change. What I note is that they don't evolve for themselves, and therefore they are not uh, subject to the kind of evolution that Dawkins was talking about, that biologists are talking about. It is a form of evolution that you can call it evolution. It's the same way hearts, lungs, and all of the phenotype evolves, really, which is at the service of genes. Now, I just remembered what you mentioned earlier because you criticized the view of uh, mimetics being dependent on humans and essentially your statement is it's not because memes depend on humans that they don't evolve in the same way viruses evolve. Uh, you are correct. This is not the criteria that, le that leads me to disqualify memes as an evolving entity in the Dawkins and Darwin sense of the word. Uh, what leads me to conclude that that memes are not a Darwinian evolutionary entity is the fact that they are subject to manipulation of their genetic line that is non-random, that is caused by human brains which evolve for their own interest. There is no equivalent in the genome. When humans uh, you're, you're evolve, wrong there. When they, 
you're wrong about that. Let me let me let me continue my statement and then you show me how I'm wrong. When humans have a mutation on their DNA genome, it is not a Facebook group. It is not a meme that has induced this mutation. This mutation is random as far as its informational content goes. When a meme gets modified by a human brain, its informational control is subjected to filters, emotions, taboos that all have evolved for the purpose of DNA reproduction. Where am I wrong on that? So you're wrong when you say that that, uh, mutations are not subject to outside forces. The vast majority of mutations that you that you have in your genome, if you were to look at it, are due to uh, uh, copy and paste um, structures in your genome. There's there's a bunch of these independent evolving entities in your genome that can copy and paste themselves. Transposable units. These are their own evolving entities, and they are interfering with your genome. This happens all the time, right? The, the, the random thing mutation is that culture idea. does not have informational mm-hmm. control over these replugging. These replugging, uh, re, they do occur, I agree with you, but it's not like people are discussing, should I change my chromosome 13 and add this ACGT here? There is no social and mimetic structure for the modification of DNA genes. Of course, we're starting to have one. We have the first case in China, and, and that, I say, that is very dangerous. That's what I point to in my book, we are headed toward genetic modifications of that kind. But up to now, uh, human culture does not play with human genetics in in an informationally controllable fashion, whereas human genetics keep modifying memes in that way, in a way where they undermine their mutation, they undermine the randomness of these mutations in order to control the memes and make them evolve toward ways that will serve DNA genes. Yeah, so the important thing to understand here is that memes are evolving as symbionts. And when you understand that, when you understand what a symbiont is, I'm sure you know this, you have in your PhD in biology, you realize how similar these two things are. So uh, if you look at a coral, a coral, a tropical coral has a symbiotic relationship with uh, uh, zooxanthellae, which is this little single-celled plant that lives inside of its its cells, and the the corals corals used to be their own independent little animals. There's actually lots of or of corals that don't need zooxanthellae in order to survive. Zooxanthellae also used to be their own independent structure too, but now they're locked into symbiosis. And so the zooxanthellae, uh, it's still its own independent evolving entity. Mutations change how it does its thing, and it's competing with others who sent that for survival and reproduction. It is evolving inside the environment of its larger coral, and there are there's competition between other species of zooxanthellae, other other strains of zooxanthellae, for survival inside that tissue of that coral. But if zooxanthellae ever undergoes a mutation that makes it kill its host, um, I mean, massacre its host to extinction, then of course, the zooxanthellae is going to go extinct as well. This is the type of trap that, that memes are in. They can, whenever we have symbiosis, uh, we tend to see a mutualism arise. Uh, you can get uh, virulent symbiosis. You can get, for example, I have, I just got an E. coli infection. I was in Ecuador. E. coli is a symbiont that, that lives inside of us, and we need it to produce vitamin, I think it's vitamin K2. If you don't have it, you get malnourished. But if you get a strain that's acting up, uh, you get sick and you can actually die. And the, the parasite will die with you in that case. Uh, over time, we see that symbionts often evolve to help their host. So I actually agree with you that religion, and for the most part, so I was raised Mormon and no longer religious, but my my identical twin brother who stayed Mormon, he's got six kids and he's raising them and he's doing the whole like Mormon giant family thing. Mor- the Mormon religion is actually helping him survive and reproduce better than I'm surviving and reproducing. 
I would say that and I'm living better. And this is true for but... all atheists uh, on average in America. The atheists yeah, find it, themselves it with a, a, such a low birth rate that Susan Blackmore herself, the author of The Meme Machine, said, oh my God, I think we, we missed something here. Religion is not just a virus of the mind. Somehow it helps yeah. people reproduce.